Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Hewlett Packard 3300 function generator and the 3305A sweep plug in. I already released a um, video about this main part so i'm not going to repeat this in any way it's just going to be a super super fast uh, <laughs> recap about the channel a and channel b got the two different outputs here at the same time and this can of course work as a standalone signal generator from uh, 10 millihertz to a 100 kilohertz but the interesting thing is you can remote control this signal generator by different plugins. That is the whole concept of this uh, unit. And this one is the sweep plugin. I've never seen this before, so I think this is uh, pretty cool. I really hope this one works, and I also hope the main unit works. But we'll definitely go and see. So the rear side is pretty simple. And it's really nice. It's quite modern with this connector. I think somebody modified this one. It's not me, but this is definitely what I would do. I would maybe put the connector a little bit more straight, but what have you, <laughs> at least it's there, right? We got the different remote for frequency dial. You can see the frequency control and frequency dial. So you can change this by just open this and then you can access. So that is uh, really nice. And uh, yeah, so far it looks uh, pretty fine here from the back. Let's, yeah, let's open and inspect. Inside we got uh, not the biggest surprise about the main unit. Uh, like I said, I already released uh, a video about this one. Uh, I just wanted to see that it's nice and beautiful and do a little recap from old days. We've got a nice oven oscillator in here. So uh, it's accurate and uh, fine. And uh, then the plug-in module. I want to have a look at this really cool sweep module. And I also want to inspect the rear connector. It looks a little bit funny with some of the pins going up a little bit like that, but I hope it is in good shape. Did you expect it to be this compact? And then, I mean, it is amazing how much stuff you need to make a sweep. What the heck? We got all those plug-in boards and they're neatly marked with colors so we can easily plug them in. Maybe they're even coded. And also, I really love this little detail here about the ranges look at that so this changes like that and then here we got the start and stop look at this at this point right click oh this is nice use of friendliness wow i am so impressed Gotta look at those different modules. What we got of fancy smancy 1970 design. Oh, we got double sided and single sided connectors. Look at that difference. So let's look a little bit at the different uh, plug in boards. Of course, this is. Transistor fits and dual matched transistor pairs in those packages. But also have a little look at those resistors. We've got the HP brand on them, 10K, and look at that, 0.01% matched. Okay, and from 69. So that is the H. 
this track right there looks a little bit interesting. I need to look at stuff that looks a little bit weird. Did anything leak? Here we got a capacitor. Nah, maybe not. This is maybe just, yeah, nothing important. So, we got, I think, this board and that board, they look very much like the same. Again, full of all those matched super components. Yeah, this board here is more or less exactly the same. So let's put these away a little bit. And uh, here we got a board with some HP type numbers again this can be a normal component whether, whether they just uh, rebranded or re numbered this with their own part number so it can be just a normal regular something well, there's a way to look so that looks things up like that I think one more this is more or less the same of course we got bigger and bigger capacitors on some of the boards because this uh, uh, covers a very wide range of uh, yeah, frequency settings. And the last one, of course, <laughs> really, really heavy. Why would you use a 200 volt capacitor? It's only 10.0 micro, but it's just accuracy and stability. Again here, 200 volts, but this is a 10.0. 1.0 I don't know about the specifications we, of course we got some of the higher ranges there's even a little trimmer capacitor here for adjustment but there is one module I found um, very important look at that so when I'm doing my inspection rounds I always see stuff like this so this capacitor here leaked or shorted. You can even see it's a little bit brown. And this is why you can't go and power up old stuff like this. You're going to cause all sorts of new problems. So now I need to go and replace those two capacitors. And luckily, I can see it's 22 micro. 30, 25 volts or something like that. So I will take some close-up pictures and do my very best to try and replace this and clean this. And this entire area can be um, leaked with this, and it's causing um, yeah, <laughs> leaking currents, currents because this acid was um, conductive when it leaked, and then it just dry out and become all sorts of nastiness. And when the humidity comes to this, it can go um, conductive again, causing all sorts of uh, failures. So I need to carefully clean this module. I need to look at my main uh, unit here as well before I power it up. I think I want to share this little funny detail. <laughs> so now I cleaned all this and desoldered the capacitors. Oh, look at that. Remember the two positive ends that was up here, okay? And the two negative ends that was down here. So let's flip the board. See, we, okay, nothing is connected up here, okay? Now, only one connection between the two positive here it's not connecting to anything else right so that means the capacitor is between this and that and that's it why would they take two electrolytics and put them back to back that is some stupid idea and it's because it's probably a positive or a negative or an ac signal well, why not use capacitors like film capacitors or anything else that handles positive and negative voltages? Maybe it has something to do with the size because they wanted 10, uh, well, it was 222, um, right? So that is 11 micro because they are in series. But still, it's a little bit funny, isn't it? So that's my repair for now. So here is 10 micro ceramic and it's of course connected the same 
way this one goes to this one, then that is perfectly fine. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Just in case I forgot to show the rear side, I love it. Not even a circuit board, no need for that. We'll just put the wires through here and solder it like that. Easy peasy. So let's try and see what we can do here. And I went through a full D going visual. So I think this is gonna work. I'm just gonna go and uh, trust my luck. 42 watts, and look, we got output. That is weird. Why is this not working? Oh, here we go. We, of course, see the sweeper is going on and off and it's doing its uh, thing. We can hear some clickety click in here. See, I should maybe go manual. Let's see what is going on here. So here we go. So we've got the two outputs running here at the same time. We've got a sine wave and the triangle. So far, so good. So that means the output drivers and all that seems to be working. And over here, and this one needs a little bit of massage. Okay, so let's put this for number four times 10K. So it should be 40, but it's 39. And I am now in manual mode. I think this uh, bypasses uh, all this kind of stuff, right? And then, yeah, exactly. Good. And then nothing here seems to be doing anything. <laughs> now I will try it and set up the sweeper. And I think we put the sweeper in auto. And then you see it is doing. Okay. What am I doing wrong here? Let's dial this up. Let's dial this one up. And here we go. Can we see it's doing some sweep? Yeah, we could. Click. And then it restarts a million hours. Okay. See? Here we go. Sweepity, sweepity, sweepity. Oh, that is a nice linear sweep. So, how do we set up the sweep time? Here is sweep time. It's faster. Oh, it can even go. Oi, oi, oi. Flippity floppity funky. Wow. I am super happy it works. But it's funny if it goes really, really slow, then there is this restart. Click and then you restart something and it starts. Aha. Look at that. It starts at a high frequency. And then it goes low. See what I have done here. I put the start frequency higher. So what if I do it the other way? Can I do that the other way? Look at that. Now it's. See. Starts. Low. And then it sweeps up. So you can do both ways. I totally love it. I am a fan already. And you can, of course, give it more. And then the restart, that is a little bit funny. Fascinating things. Well, well, what can we use this for? <laughs> we also got um, an external input. It can be trick frequency control depending on what you're doing. So you can, of course, trick this or start this, or you can maybe use this as an analog. See, it says here 6 volt per decade and plus minus 24 volts maximum. And the sweep output is channel B. Is here, right? Well, well, let's try and play. So here we go. This is external 
an input. I put in one hertz, so you can see what's going on right here. And uh, I'm using this external input. And uh, I can now, of course, not... Yes, stop is not doing much, but it's the start, see? Where I set my start frequency, and then it's moving with six volts per decade. This will probably sound really, really fascinating. <laughs> and I can, yeah, and then I can modulate it here if I want more or less. And wow, I am super, super excited about this one. It's just fantastic. Of course, nothing here seems to be doing anything because I'm in external um, control. Maybe let's use this trigger. No? So it's probably an output, isn't it? Hmm. Let's demonstrate the trigger mode. So we also got um, a manual trick. So I can start the, the sweep. And uh, I can also use the input as a trick. So now the signal here is 0.5 hertz. And it will start this sweep every se uh, other second. So you can use this for all sorts of funky uh, sweep sounds that will be, yeah, tricked. <laughs> well, 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 that is definitely some funky unit. All right, I think actually this is uh, more or less all I wanted to show. So uh, I hope you had a little bit of fun and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.